So the next topic is design procedure of raw foundation. Okay. So in the previous lectures we have studied the design of rectangular footing, trapezoidal footing and also we have solved some problems. And uh, in the case of design of uh, raw foundation, uh, only the procedure is needed uh, as far as your syllabus. Uh, so, uh, just uh, study the procedure uh, how to uh, how to design a raw foundation. Okay. So, this is the raw foundation. We are providing the uh, raw foundation for the entire structure in order to uh, control the differential settlement. Okay. And first step, uh, find the center of gravity of fluids. Okay. First, we have to calculate, uh, we have to find out the center of gravity of fluids. Then determine the contact pressure distribution. And the third step, if the center of gravity of the load matches with the center of gravity of footing, then there will be no eccentricity. Okay. And the equation uh, for finding the pressure Q is equal to Q by A plus or minus Mx by Zx plus or minus My by Zy. And this, uh, this equation you have studied in your design. And if uh, the center of gravity does not match, there will be eccentricity ok. So, if uh, center of gravity does not match uh, q is equal to q 1 by a plus or minus q into e by i y plus or minus uh, q into e y by i x that is e y e, e x and e y are the eccentricities of the resultant force ok. q is the uh, total load on the mat and area a is the total area of the mat x and y coordinates of uh, give any given point on the mat with respect to x and y axis passing through the centroid of the area of the mat and i x i y moment of inertia of the mat with respect to x and y axis. And the design aspect is not needed uh, since it is geotechnical subject. So, you just uh, write down these procedures only if asked for example. And divide the slab into strips in x or y direction and each strip is assumed to act as independent beam which is subjected to contact pressure and column load. And the modified load can be calculated uh, for each strip and draw SFD and BMD. Ok, so for design uh, of this raft foundation just uh, uh, by heart the uh, design procedure from your textbook uh, also I will share some note. Okay. So, which is convenient to you, you just uh, study the uh, procedure and uh, I do not know whether you are going to study in, in uh, this portion in your uh, DSS, design, design, uh, DCS portion. Okay. So, if, uh, if it is taken in uh, that portion, in that subject, you can write that procedure also. Okay. So, this is about design of, uh, design procedure of raft. Next is the allowable bearing capacity of raft on sand and clay. So, first one bearing capacity equation for cohesionless soil that is bearing capacity equation on sand. And the bearing capacity based on shear failure criteria in cohesionless soil uh, and is proportional to width of the footing B. That is for cohesionless soil the first component of Terzaghi's equation will be 0 because C is equal to 0. C and C plus Q and Q plus 0.5 gamma B and gamma is the equation and the third equation 0.5 gamma B and gamma that is in that equation there is uh, a term width B that is finally bearing capacity is proportional to width in the case of sand because first two terms will be cancelled since it is uh, cautious soil ok. So, as the width of the raft is very large uh, what will happen B will be very high for the case of raft that is q is proportional to width. So, q will be also very high, bearing capacity is very high in the case of raft. Hence, normally uh, the settlement criteria governs for raft on cautious soil because since bearing capacity is very high, there is no risk in the case of bearing capacity, it, it is very high. So, the next risk come, come in the case of settlement criteria. So, we have, uh, so in the case of raft, the settlement criteria governs on cautious soil if it is if the raft is on cautious soil ok uh, because in the case of cautious soil uh, the q that is bearing capacity is proportional to width b in the case of raft the width is very high because we are providing for the entire structure so width will be very high. So, uh, the bearing capacity is very high in the case of uh, raft on sand ok. So, uh, normally settlement criteria governs for raft on cautious soil. So, as a raft are rigid settlement is uniform. Ok, here in the case of raft the settlement will be uniform and hence safe settlement pressure can be increased by 100 percentage over the values 
allowed for uh, spread footing and the net allowable pressure q n is equal to 2 into 35 into n minus 3 b plus 0.3 divided by 2 b the whole square r d into r gamma n is the corrected n value b width of the footing in meter and r d is given by this equation that is 1 plus b f by b and is uh, should be less than or equal to 2 and r gamma 0.5 into 1 plus z w by b okay this is the equation and uh, uh, in this area the problem will not be asked uh, just uh, find the equations just uh, by heart these equations in order to find the bearing capacity on sand for raft okay so procedure is only needed and the above equation uh, can also be simplified that as b is generally large for raft b plus uh, not 3 can be approximate as b because b is very high Okay, so B plus 0.3 by 2 B is approximately equal to 1 by 2. So, Q and A uh, is uh, shortened like this and the final uh, short equation uh, for design of uh, raft foundation uh, that is 17.5 N by N minus 3 R D into R gamma. This is the final simplified equation. Okay, that is uh, in the case of uh, raft foundation on sand, remember one point that is as B is very high bearing capacity will be very high. So, uh, normally settlement criteria governs for raft on sand or oceanless soil ok and write this equation and here since B is very high we can simplify this equation like this ok. This is the uh, equation for bearing capacity for uh, cohesionless soil. Next is the uh, bearing capacity equation for cohesive soil that is in the case of clay. And for finding out this uh, bearing capacity equation for cohesive soil, we are using Skempton's equation. Actually, this Skempton's equation is uh, very important uh, after uh, our Tersagi's equation, but in your syllabus it is not uh, referred, so I did not take that portion that is Skempton's equation. So, the using Skempton's equation, we can find the bearing capacity, bearing capacity of uh, uh, raft on cohesive soil, ok. That is QNU is equal to CNC. It is for clay soil that is first uh, first component only will be there in the case of Tersagis from the Tersagis equation Q is equal to CNC and why NC according to Skemptons NC is equal to 5 into 1 plus 0.2 DF by B into 1 plus 0.2 B by L for DF by, by DF by B less than 2.5 that is if DF by DF by B depth of footing by width is less than 2.5 NC is this one. And if df by b is greater than or equal to 2.5, uh, this nc is equal to 7.5 into 1 plus 0.2 b by l. Okay. Here as b is very large, normally df by b is less than 2.5. So, usually this equation is uh, taken because here b is very large. So, this df by b will be less than 2.5. So, this is the equation for nc in the case of uh, raft on cohesive soil. So, into C is the Q and U, this N C into C, C is the quotient. So, this is the bearing capacity equation for cohesive soil, ok. So, these are the uh, bearing capacity equation of raft on uh, sand and clay. Okay. So, uh, the notes will be shared in Moodle, ok. If you have any doubt, uh, please contact. Uh, remember, the problem of the, usually uh, the problem will not be asked if, asked in this area. You just uh, f, uh, you just study study the uh, procedure for designing the raw foundation, conventional design procedure. And uh, here also, in the case of uh, allowable bearing capacity of raft on sand and clay, you just uh, by heart these equations if theory if it is asked for theory part. Okay. Thank you.